There is a certain myth that if you think of an imaginary person, give them a name and create content around them, that you should think about them and when you're creating content or copywriting. Truthfully, the myth is half true. And let me get into it. Hey, I'm Veronica DiPolo, and with more than 15 years being a marketing strategist, you're going to experience the new way to promote your business with clear and unique messaging by giving you actionable marketing and messaging strategies that get you interested leads to transform the lives of your audiences so that you build up your brand with continuous momentum. Get ready because here's where we say no to outdated marketing strategies and society norms, and we say yes to change from the inside out. Welcome to the Branding Momentum Podcast. So your ideal client or your potential client can be a person that you have in mind or you know that could be your ideal customer, but it can also be you 15 years ago. That is my case, right? And what's crucial about having your potential client in mind is that you need to know them very well, but you do that by asking questions. So when you ask these questions inside your copy and, you know, and whatever you're doing, you're creating your content, your questions need to come from the logical and the emotional brain. And most of us don't have a problem addressing the more logical kind of questions, right? What is your services? How does it help your customers? What's the price? Um, When are you on sale? So these sort of questions and things you actually immediately say because they are all logical, right? But without mentioning the underlying emotions, you are really going to struggle when over the hearts of your customers. And studies in the neuroscience say that when companies connect with customers' emotions, the payoff can be huge payoff, like amazing. And one of the best strategies to uncover your potential clients, emotional motivators is by asking them questions, but asking the right questions is very key, but you can't just go and ask random questions to feel this emotional connection with you and then be expecting them to buy from you. All these studies also show that the people that ask more questions are perceived to be as good listeners, they're more understanding, they're validating, and they're even caring kind of people or companies actually. And this, my friends, is key when speaking to your potential clients and how to craft your messaging. So to really get into the emotional state of your potential clients, you need to show empathy and understanding. And I know you've heard me say this before, but people usually won't bite on the first go. Some people will like what you're asking And some people simply won't, meaning they won't feel identified with what you're asking. And that is actually a very good thing. Now, let's think for a second how we behave as humans, as persons, right? So throughout the day, we are presented with a million little things and choices. And we immediately say yes and immediately say no. And you're probably going to be thinking, I'm like, oh, how can you say that? You know, that buying power of having decisions. Oh, maybe I just went now and I just bought a bunch of stuff that I probably didn't need and I ended up buying them. Yes, I know. I do that too. But when we actually see these things on social or these questions or these things that are happening in our life all the time, we are making choices all the time. We are saying either yes, we like it or we know we don't like it. But let me give you an example, right? Let's say you read a post or a question or a blog. Are you hitting slumps into your manifestations? Either some of you will feel connected to that question and say, yes, oh my God, that is so me. I need to read more. Or you will say, no way, that is not for me. I don't believe in that or I don't care or 
whatever. And that is completely okay. You want the people who are not your ideal clients to move on. And you can actually focus on connecting with the people that you want to really serve. So if we go back to that original statement that I said at the beginning about the myth of your potential ideal client, that it actually could be someone that you already wish you had as a client, or it could be you maybe 15 years ago. And these things, you have to feel them and you have to understand them and you need to identify with what they actually like, or maybe you like, or what they fear, or what you fear, or what they struggle with, or what you struggle with, or who they want to be, or who you are right now. So these questions that you should ask yourself about your potential clients, these questions will serve you to generate all the different types of prompts and social media content and engaging conversations and email subjects, or even give you the unique clues to write on your website to target to that potential client. So some of the things that we need to come across and understand is like, who do you work for? Identify the struggles that these potential clients have. What is the transformation you would like to provide in their business? Like in your services, what are the transformation that you provide? Which mistakes they make? What are the objections when they actually go and buy from you? And what are the possibilities for them to actually work with you? right? So if this, what I'm saying resonates with you, I am putting in the description, the link to my special guide, how to speak to your potential client on social media and beyond a guide and workbook. You can work on all the 16 questions that you should definitely ask yourself that you know about your current clients or your potential clients and get these prompts and messaging techniques and questions, how to address, how do they feel? And you can put that into your social media and on your emails and on your website and everywhere you want to be creating, right? So besides this, how to speak to your clients on social media, I'm also giving you two bonuses inside of that workbook and guide. And the first bonus is going to be 15 Instagram covers with unique messaging prompts. And these real covers makes it easy to stay on brand and keep your feed, you know, beautiful and cohesive, but it also provides, you know, the right hooks to capture your audience attention in a matter of seconds. And these real covers are targeted And you can actually adopt them from the original guide and workbook. Plus, I'm also giving you a second bonus, which is 46 hooks and 25 calls to action that you can also drive more engagement into your posts, on your videos, on your blogs, but mainly, obviously, on your posts and on your videos. So if you would like to get how to speak to your potential clients on social media and beyond, be sure to go to the description and check the link right now. And if you have any questions, be sure to address them and send me a DM on Instagram at Veronica DiPolo. Okay, guys, I hope this serves you. Even if you don't buy it, it's fine. Okay, it's okay. I want you to start to understand that you need to start tapping into these emotions every time you are writing copy on your social media. So you can start actually tweaking and changing and testing. How do they feel? How do they not feel? Are they engaging? Are they not engaging? And make a test. Do it for, I don't know, maybe a month or 60 days, whatever it works for you. But you got to be understanding better and seeing that what you are saying on social media or not even on social media, let me correct myself, 
not even on social media, on your emails, on your subjects, everything needs to be targeted to your potential clients. Okay, that is done for me. I'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye-bye.